and good morning. We do collectively believe that it's going to be a good day. First, because it is the day that the Lord has made, and second, because it's a day that we are going to utilize fully to honor the life of Frida Steves, who was a faithful wife, a loving mother, a bragging grandmother, and an awestruck grand great grandmother. Before she was those things, she was a daughter of the one true king, and she staked her whole life on a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And for our large family, we will forever be grateful of that fact. I'd like to begin today by saying on behalf of the whole family, thank you for coming today. We are overwhelmed by the steady flow of people that came in yesterday afternoon and last night, and we're honored by your presence here today. Some of you have come both yesterday and today. Well, today is going to be filled with songs. Uh, one thing that Nanny loved was Southern Gospel music, so you can be sure you're going to hear that today. You're going to hear some memories, and we're going to have some laughs together because she absolutely loved to laugh. We're also very appreciative of the pastors who will be participating today, Pastor Doug Moore, Pastor Tim Shaw, both with roots to our family over the years through the ministry of Kingsway Assembly and Kingsway Care Center. Well, funerals bring people together, and at the very top of the list of things that Nanny loved was having everyone together. She loved big parties, and one of the earliest memories for me as one of the grandsons is the ceramic name tags that were at the table every Christmas. These are ones that she made by hand, and we all smile because we remember them. You had a special little Santa or a tree uh, right beside your name. And if you had a name tag, uh, you officially belonged in the family. So when you began naming someone, it was a big deal the Christmas year that they got a name tag. It meant that she accepted you into the family. Well, today, though we're sad to say goodbye, we do not grieve as those who have no hope. Rather, our faith in Jesus assures us that she is now alive in Christ, and she has a special name tag at the king's table, right next to Grampy, to Arona, to Bonnie, who was buried on this very day 11 years ago, her parents and the siblings. Just imagine Frida's surprise right behind her as she was tapped on the shoulder from her sister Hazel, who was promoted to heaven just 36 hours after her. I want to say a sincere thank you to those family members who provided care and support to her over the months. Uh, your role and those supporting roles that some of you had is very, very much appreciated from others who are out of town. And it must be very emotional watching a parent and grandparent deteriorate so painfully slow. You know, one's Bible can give you great insight about an individual. And so she had two Bibles that are here at the front table, and we were able to go through those. And I know, and you know, that Frida's life would not be defined as smooth. Someone who moves approximately 32 times <laughs> is not the definition of smooth. There were many ups and downs, but through it all, I'm confident that she would turn to the truths and promises of Scripture. In fact, in her scrapbook, she personalized several verses. This is one of them. Here's what I mean. In Philippians 4, verse 6 and 7, it says, Don't worry about anything. And then she's got Frida in brackets. Don't worry about anything, Frida. Pray about everything. Tell God what you need, Frida. And thank Him for all He has done. Exclamation mark. Thank you. Then, then you, Frida, will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your heart and mind as you live in Jesus Christ. She didn't just read scripture, she personalized scripture. Isaiah 43.2 is another verse that was underlined and highlighted from her Bible. It follows the theme of Philippians 4, and it says this, Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name. You are mine. She personalized this. 
When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. When you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. She had many rivers in her life. When you walk through the fire, she had some of that too. You will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. At the first page of her Bible, right in the table of contents, in big, bold handwriting, it says this. This is my favorite verse in the King James Version. <laughs> Romans 8. 28. Let me remind you of what it says. It says, And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love Him, who have been called according to His purpose. She had trouble in life, but she clung to the Scriptures. And it's a wonderful reminder for us today. Every grandchild was told regularly that she was praying for us. That is an absolute truth. She would nightly go name by name, and there's a lot of us. Let me ask you this question today. What was it that she was praying for? For us? To the grandkids? Have we ever thought about that? It's easy to say, oh yes, I'm praying for you. For a grandmother, for us to accept that. Oh, that's nice, Grammy. Thank you. That's nice, Grammy. Things do. But what was she praying for? is the question that came to my mind over the last few days. I'm fairly confident that her prayers would have included at least these three things. One, our protection. What grandmother would want her grandkids and her children protected. Number two, for our relationships that we would make wise choices. Pretty confident in that. And number three, I deeply believe that in her prayers... She was praying for our salvation. That each of her grandchildren would come to know and love Jesus. That mattered deeply to her. Now I'm very grateful for the Christian heritage that she has passed on to all of us. And it unfortunately takes a death or a funeral uh, for people to begin to ask questions about life. Silently to themselves, it's very common for people to begin to wonder, am I good enough to go to heaven? And for a previous message series, I've gone on the streets of Moncton before and asked random people interviewing them, saying, what qualifies someone for entrance into heaven? Their eyes light up, that's for sure, when you ask somebody a real-life question like that. The most common answer always is the good people who do good things. They're the ones that are going to go to heaven. I'm pretty certain on the streets of St. John as well, that would be the common theme if you were to ask. Good people go to heaven. There's a common perception that when we die and when we stand before God... That he's going to say, bring in all the good things that we've done, and now let's bring in all the bad. And you're just there, your knees just knocking together. And on this cosmic scale, he puts the good things and measures up the bad things. And that determines where we spend eternity. What a terrible image. It's not at all what the Bible describes. Where did this come from? Frida realized something in her reading of the Bible as she went to church, as she listened to sermons on her own spiritual journey through the Southern Gospel music. She realized that it is not good people that go to heaven, but it is forgiven people who go to heaven. And there is a huge difference between the two. You see Jesus in the Gospels, in Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John, you can read it for yourselves, but the most hated tax collector who cheated people out of money, when Jesus came in contact with him, he said, you're forgiven. To the lady who had six husbands, you're forgiven. To the thief hanging on the cross beside him, you're forgiven. Jesus talked at the best of the best. In those days, it was the Pharisees, the religious police of the day, we're not going to make it. But the worst of the worst could in fact be forgiven. That gives us wonderful hope. As I sit and I meet new people coming to our church, I'm asked this question often. What is the difference between Christianity and other religions? And I tell them it's very simple. Other religions are all about D-O, do, go through these rituals, do these 
good things to win the favor of God to counter or attempt to cancel out all the bad things that you've done to pay for your sins. But Christianity on the other side is all about D-O-N-E. Done. The price has been paid for those sins because of Jesus Christ. Frida, my nanny, realized the simple truth that makes the difference on where she is in eternity. Do versus done. This gives us the assurance that she is indeed in heaven. And in closing, I want you to know that Jesus' invitation to eternity with him is the fairest system of all. Why do I say that? Three reasons. Number one, everybody gets into heaven the same way. One way through Jesus. Romans 10.13 backs up this claim. Anyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Do you think anyone means anyone? Number two, everybody is welcome to have a relationship with Jesus Christ. John 14.6 says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And of course, one of the most famous verses from the Bible, John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son that whoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. Everybody gets into heaven the same way. Everybody is welcome to have a relationship with Jesus. And the third reason this invitation is the fairest of all is that everyone can meet the requirement. Simply believe in Jesus Christ that he is who he said he is, the way, the truth, and the life, and you will be saved. I can assure you that Frida would want all of you here today to know that she loved Jesus, first and foremost, especially her family, and that she stood on those biblical promises every day of her life. And with her final influence in life today, Through this ceremony, this is her last deposit into us. I would encourage you to do the same with your life. Especially within her own family. That was indeed her prayer for you. This life is not all there is. This is just the beginning of eternity for us. Jesus told us that he has gone to prepare a place for us. That he'll come again. And death is not the end. It's a very sweet promise.